So, uh, Nolan, you've recently written uh, this, this fascinating book, Finding the Next Steve Jobs. Uh, and I want to talk about this. And I, 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 want, I wonder if you could just start with what was the first time that you met Steve Jobs? Tell us about that experience. Do you remember that? Yeah, Steve Jobs found Atari. And one of the things that I talk about is how you create a company that is really a advertisement that kind of tells everybody that you're a creative company and that you're cool and really interesting. And then the creatives will find you. And that's really what Steve Jobs did. And he was hired by Al Alcorn. And that afternoon, he came into my office as though that was the right thing to do. We first were, day. First day. When he literally, Walter Isaacson talks about this, he walks in off the street and says, I'm not leaving until I get a job, Yeah. right? Yeah. And he just walked into your, your office just, just like that. Well, that was after he'd been hired. Yeah. <laughs> and what happened when he came in? I said, hi, what's up? He says, I think you've got a really awesome company. Awesome. He's, he uses that a lot. And, uh, and he said, uh, I think that uh, uh, everything is pretty good, but I've seen your soldering connections, and they're really crappy. <laughs> I said, well, let, let's fix them. And he says, I will. Hmm. And that was kind of it. Wow. And then we got. That was cool of you not to throw him out. Well, I kind of threw him out. Okay. <laughs> well, not really. But, but it, was a, it was a thing where I always tried to have a really open office, that if people had something to say, uh, that was okay. If they were wasting my time, they knew that I didn't like that. But uh, I had a beer tap in my office, keg beer. And, uh, and every day at 6 o'clock, the beer light was on. We'd always have a prototype of one of our new games in the corner. We'd talk about business, and anybody who had something to say could come in and uh, play the games and hang out and do that. And it was some of the most valuable communication time that we had. Mm. And I thought it really worked well. And, um, and you know, nobody seemed to abuse it. Mm. What, what did you see in him Even very early? You, you saw qualities in him that even the other people at Atari didn't see? What, what, what was it that you saw in Steve Jobs that was special? We, we always hired for intensity because our, our products were bizarre enough, different enough, that we could train almost everything else. Um, our markets were different. Our, our technology was different. Our manufacturing processes Nobody turned inventory as fast as we did. And so we felt the most important thing anybody had was intensity and the desire to work hard. And we called it work hard, play hard. We had a real culture of working our butts off and then playing our butts off. And, and that's one of the reasons that we did these Friday night beer busts. You know, it was all based on hitting quotas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they, that became not only very bizarre in the, in the valley, but it became kind of a signature. They said, oh, you know, it's big party time at, 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 at Atari. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, no, just the, the big parties, the beer bus with pizza and what have you, were about every other week on a Friday Fridays. night, if they met quota. Mm. And that was, we but you were, always met the quota, right? Not you, always. You usually met the quota. You usually met the quota. Yeah. And if they didn't, they'd bitch that the quota was too high, but that's, that's another story for another time. <laughs> but we were, uh, we were manufacturing coin-operated games at the time, and so we had a really interesting group of the guys who were running the big boxes around and that sort of thing, and the girls who were stuffing and test, testing the computers. So it was about... 50-50 boys, girls, hmm. and all the executives were in their late 20s, early 30s, 
And you're, you're at what age at this time? Huh? How old were you? I was 30. Okay. And, uh, and most of the employees were 20 to 23. Wow. In fact, when we got health care for everybody, they looked at our demographics and they said, we can't believe it. And so they quoted us really, really low prices. <laughs> and they said, well, and, I, and it was so much under what I'd budgeted for it. And I said, well, you know, what, what about dental? And so we got dental in it and eyeglasses. And, you know, it, was a, it turned out to be a Cadillac plant just because our demographics are so good. Two weeks later, after we announced this, every one of the girls on the production line had braces on. <laughs> you know, they turned around, all smiled, and it was a flash. <laughs> anyway. Well, you really, I mean, you really changed the meaning of the word culture. I think today we all take it for granted that you know, you described these Friday afternoon meetings. I, we used to do that at EA. We yeah. did that every week. And it was like it was nothing. It just seemed normal. And we've got Microsoft here. They throw these awesome parties here. We got Google down the street. They, you know, they do the same. But it, it was totally revolutionary at the time. And, and you talk about... And everybody thought I was nuts. They probably, I'm sure, yeah, they thought you're crazy. Um, well, not only that. Every engineer in the Valley in 1970 wore a white shirt and a tie to work. It was a professional. And remember, this was, this was right after the, the summer of love. And you know everybody had their hippie costume. They'd go up on the weekends and be a hippie at Haight-Ashbury. You know, talk about posers. Wow. <laughs> but, but we decided that we wanted to create a new kind of company that was a total meritocracy. And so we basically said, what is a meritocracy? Don't care about process. Treat everybody like an adult. Give them goals. Let them achieve those goals any way they can. Let them wear what they want. Let them come to work when they want. Let them work hard, work easy. If you work you work a little bit, but really smart, that should be good enough. And, and, and I think that those are the underpinnings of the proper corporate culture, where you minimize process, you maximize outcomes, you become very clear about the outcomes that you expect. Lines of communication open. No silos of secrecy. Open, open, open. And I believe that that really, if anything, that has helped to make, to keep Silicon Valley on the edge, I think those, those, those standards, that ecosystem, you know, it, it started Atari. I think Jobs and, and Wozniak helped that and took it to Apple with them. And pretty soon, everybody looked and said, I mean, I think between Apple and Atari, we were one of the biggest employers of the Valley. And they said, look at how these guys are doing it. Maybe they got something. And so slowly but surely, everybody kind of climbed on the bandwagon. And now an engineer can go to work looking like shit, and it's OK. <laughs> Preferred, right? Preferred, yeah. yeah. Um, well, and th this is, I mean, it's that attitude, it's that culture that you created that actually kept him it kept him at your company because they were going to, Al and these other guys that he was working with were, I mean, this is this kind of famous story, correct me if I'm wrong, or t please tell it, that he smelled horrible, he wasn't showering, he was, you know, pissing everyone off, and you came in and said, hey, here's, here's the solution, tell, tell us, and what, what was that solution? Well, I put, I put Steve on the engineering night shift, <laughs> which there wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> But it turned out that I was being a little tricky because I knew he had a really good friend, Steve Wozniak, who was actually a lot better engineer than, than Jobs was. Mm. So I basically got Wozniak. Because Woz was hanging out at Atari, right? He was right. coming in on Fridays or coming in after just to play the games. And, right. Yeah. And so I got two Steves for the price of one. 
You know, what's wrong with that? 